So if you don't have a capture card, but you do have a Mac computer today, I'm going to be going through whether you have Sony, Fuji, Panasonic, even Olympus camera, you can live stream via USB. Like I've talked about a lot with the Canon cameras and Ecamm live. And we're going to be jumping into that right now. Hey, what's up entrepreneurs? Diana here with Entree Woman TV, helping you simplify the video creation process. Now I've done a ton of videos here on the channel when it comes to live streaming with the Canon M50 or just various cameras. And today I wanna jump into a follow-up video that I'm doing to kind of support that video because Ecamm Live dropped and released where in the same way that you could literally just use a USB cable and live stream with the Canon M50 or other Canon cameras. There's a whole list of them now, even beyond what Canon's webcam utility offers. If you have a Mac and you uh, want to live stream via USB, I think this is the best way for you. But now if you have one of these other brands of camera like Olympus, Fuji, Panasonic, even Nikon, there are a ton of cameras added. So I want to cover that. So this is uh, as of April slash May 2020, the current list of cameras that are working. I'll put in a pin post down in the comments and keep this updated as we get more cameras added and tested. And if you don't see your specific camera added, go ahead and give it a, a whirl. You can test it on the free trial for Ecamm Live that'll give you access to like the pro and stuff like that and see if you can live stream via USB with your camera that may not be on this list. All right, so it's quite a list. I'm not gonna read everything. I'll just be putting it up on the screens, but to give you a, uh, an example of some of the cameras that are out there. So if you have like an Olympus camera, the OMD EM1 Mark II and three cameras, which is a horrible naming scheme, but those cameras work. The EM1X and the EM5 Mark I and Mark II work. I believe there's a Mark III that's out now. So if you have that camera, please give it a try. Let me know down in the comments uh, if you did or you have a different Olympus camera and it worked for you. Sony cameras, you have a ton out there that are working. I will say for the a6400 putting a little asterisk next to it because i'm still having some issues with it i think other people are successfully using it using it so i'm not sure if it's my usb cable or what the deal is but it is what it is so the a6000 a6300 a6400 asterisk <laughs> a6500 and the a6600 those last two a65 and 6600 are kind of questionable I think some people are getting them to work. Some people aren't. So again, test your cables and make sure that those are working. You need a data capable camera and you want to put your camera in like the USB mode. It's hard to go through tutorials for all of these. It's just, just like to let you know it's an option and that you can try it. But if you have like an HDMI to USB type setting in your camera, look it up. And for me, I want to change mine to the USB mode. And that's what's making it work with the Ecamm or at least being able to read it. So Panasonic cameras is not a whole lot on the list right now. If you have a, a Panasonic camera like the GX8, the J85 or G7 or something, uh, please try those. Let me know right now. It's just a GH5 and a GH5S that's working in Nikon. There's a whole list of cameras that are working for you guys. We have the D5100, 5200, 5600, even like the modern ones like the Z50, the Z6 and the Z7 on their mirrorless lineup. Those are working as well. The only thing I have to say about these various uh, models and then like Fuji the X-T2 and X-H1. So I don't want to forget y'all. Uh, y'all get angry. So, <laughs> so. The only thing with this is there are two things I would say, cause it's hard to know for every model and every camera, what's going to make it work for you. What I would suggest is again, this is one other time you got to check the book or check the manual or kind of Google it and see if in the HDMI or USB settings, there's a way to change it over to whatever it needs to do so that the computer can read the information from the camera. It's the same thing. Like if, as if he's probably using the regular app, or desktop apps that come with your cameras, software and you know apps and stuff like that. So try that. And then what cable should you use is gonna be based on your specific camera. Some of these cameras connect via USB-C, other ones connect via USB type B, the little ones that came on like the old school Android phones and stuff like that. But usually if you have something like that connects to your Android Fire Stick or like I said, in something that came with your phone that transfer data, not just charging, those are gonna be the cables that you want to try. There's no way that I'm familiar to mark your cable or that uh, there's a mark on the cable so that you know if it transferred data or not. So the best thing is just to give it a try and see if it registers or not, and then just swap that cable out because there are some that charge only and then some that both transfer data and charge as well. 
but that's gonna leave it for today's video i hope that your camera works and if it does or does not let me know once you've give, given it a whirl all right take care guys Thank <laughs> you.